the first thing I want to ask is how are you doing? Because to say last night was emotional would be an understatement, not only from yourself, but from the people that were voting you out, to the audience, to, as I'm sure you're about to experience, the fans as well. And it was clear even through your interview with Julie that you were still kind of digesting a lot of the stuff that was hitting you in that moment. How are you doing right now as you're kind of fully digesting everything that happened the past 24 hours? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm doing good. Unfortunately, it sucks that I was evicted. But I was crying and torn up, not because I lost the game or because I lost the chance of the money. It was because, you know, I built strong connections and it felt like I was leaving 12 of my best friends behind. So that that part, I'm going to miss them, but I wish them all the best. Yeah. So you had mentioned to Julie last night that you had a, an inkling that, you know, if if you were to go the exact way that it would do, which is pretty much accurate, right, about specifically chemo and, and T core server leading the charge to flip against you. But uh, as all this was happening, right, after MJ wins the AI arena, we see you trying to pull people to the side, making those last minute pitches. I mean, what were sort of your feelings and expectations up until Julie said you were evicted? Um, as soon as I, as soon as MJ won, not necessarily I lost, but as soon as MJ won the AI arena, I knew, unfortunately, my cards were probably going to get folded. Mm. Um, yeah, because just because Tikor and Kimo have such a tight personal relationship with Rabina, that it was going to be hard for them to to make that decision. I just hoped that I could talk them into the rationality of me choosing to protect them and of me choosing to like play my game and make it to the jury house with them would be enough to keep them cuz I don't I don't know where Rabina's going to take them honestly. I don't see that they're long for the game now. Um uh, but I could be completely blind. <laughs> You said in your interview with Julie, the extended one, that if you had Joseph and Leah, you would still be in that house. Talk to me about that a bit more. <sighs> so, you know, talk to me about those relationships. And did you assume that you had the two of them? Um, so I assumed I would have Joseph just because Joseph promised me, like, even if the vote's eight to one, I'll vote for you. I also had, you know, the, I, I thought there was a little bit of faith, a little bit of hope for Leah and or Mackenzie, um, one of those two which would have kept me in the house. Cause I knew, I, I kind of knew t and Kimo were going to go astray. Um, but the, the unfortunate issue with Big Brother is no one likes to be truthful. So when everyone was campaigning for votes, everyone's protecting their personal game in turn damaging my game because they're like, no, we're going to vote to keep Rabina. We're going to vote to keep Rabina. And Leah said she was going to vote for the house. So if I was able to get four people to just tell Leah straight up on voting for Cedric, she would have voted for me as well. And I would have been in the house. So I mean, you found this out, but we can talk a bit more about the revelation that one of the reasons why you're sitting in front of me today is that Quinn mm -hmm. does reveal the Pentagon to Kimo and t -Core. And even Quinn, when the Pentagon was formed, had felt like him and Brooklyn were definitely number four and, and number five there. So, so give me your reaction to this and how that all kind of led into you sitting in front of me today. Uh, so unfortunately, I kind of I kind of had a feeling that Quinn was going to tell Kimo about the Pentagon just because Quinn and Kimo, you know, that's how everyone found out the powers. Kimo leaked it. So I was hoping that by like week three, me proving my loyalty, which is very much why I didn't put Quinn up, me proving my loyalty to the collective and to the Pentagon was going to change the perspective. Um, it led to me sitting here today because t -Core and Kimo, I'm sure, felt like they were going to be the first ones cut when the collective got to be together. So I understand from a game perspective, I just don't think that it was smart for their game. <laughs> yeah, so you talked about this uh, both on your way out and even going in. Reward loyalty with loyalty and disloyalty with distance. Had you stayed in the house, was your game plan just to run it down to the collective and then to the Pentagon and then to, you know, the three C's of you, Kim and Chelsea, what was your game plan? Had you survived that eviction? I uh, had I survived that eviction. My game plan teetered on if t -Core and chemo had, uh, had stayed true, which is why I volunteered to be a pawn in the first place, um, which we'll get into, I'm sure later, but my game plan. Yeah. If they stayed true and voted to, with me to stay was very much to run with the collective as far as we could cut t -Core, chemo first, cut Joseph next. Then when the Pentagon, oh, let me give you some sauce. Do it. Uh, the first double eviction, we were going to cut Quinn. Oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah. The first double eviction, we were going to cut Quinn, and the Pentagon was going to go from a Pentagon to a rectangle. Uh, shapes. <laughs> but, yeah. And then 
from there, I was going to run with the rectangle. That's going to be final four. And then weigh my options with who I stood a better chance with at the end in jury. Interesting. So yeah, you set it up for me. Let's talk about going up on the block here. Cause I think on paper, you had proved to your point, your loyalty to Quinn by not backdooring him when Tucker requested it. And so you think like, okay, you owe me one. So you don't need to put me up. So talk me through this series of events that led to you ultimately agreeing to go up as hopefully somebody to beat Tucker in the veto. So it was a series of unfortunate events. Uh, what, what, why I had volunteered was actually, I thought was ingenious, right? I thought Quinn was going to have a vote. Being the deep fake HOH, I thought he was going to have a vote. So we were going to have the votes to keep me in the house, regardless of if t -Core and Chemo flipped. So the whole reason for me volunteering was to be a loyalty test to t -Core and Chemo. If they went astray, I would know which two votes went astray. And then from there, it was going to be easy to cut them and bring somebody like Leah in who we could trust. Interesting. So it was a little bit of like, I don't know, plant almost out some moles of like, let's see where the votes lie. Use me mm -hmm. as kind of a a test balloon in that way, and then use that to inform loyalties moving forward. Exactly. If it came down to me being on the block, I'm not going to lie. I had confidence that I would win either the veto competition or the AI arena. Unfortunately, the AI arena is the one thing I needed it not to be. If it was a mental comp, I would have been mm -hmm. great. If it was a physical comp, I would have been great. But being a technique comp, that's where I struggled. So rewinding back a week, obviously, as head of household, you wanted to be as squeaky clean as possible. And it just, <laughs> as it tends to do in this house, just turn into mess. So talk me through, you know, the entire process where Tucker comes to you with this plan. You ultimately say, we don't have the votes. You don't put up Quinn. I mean, how do you look back on all that, including the confrontation? And now, especially looking at the fact that, you know, you end up, ironically enough, going on Quinn's HOH here. Right, crazy. Um, so, so, you know, Tucker had brought me the plan and I'm not going to lie, I pondered it because we knew Quinn, was, Cam and I knew Quinn was snaking. Um, but the only issue we ran into is he didn't bring me the plan until very last minute. So I didn't have time to run that to ground with the other players in the Pentagon. Um, if the other players decided that that's what we would do, we would have done it and then, you know, sent Quinn home and built a relationship with Tucker. But for me, it didn't make sense not being able to talk that through, surprising the Pentagon, breaking all my trust there, surprising the collective, breaking all my trust there to gain an asset in Tucker um, who wants to see the strongest competitors go home first. So I would have blown up my game, blown up my HOH for Tucker to still win and put me on the block. Nah. Well, last thing I want to do is play a little game with you here, Cedric. Awesome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a name of a house guest that's still left in the game, and you give me the first word or few words that come to mind for them. Okay, got you. Let's start with the uh, HOH who got dethroned this week, Angela. Angela, unique. <laughs> Brooklyn. Amazing. Cam. <laughs> Dope. Chelsea. Big Sid. Joseph. Flip Flopper. Chemo. Conflicted? Mm. Leah. Floating. Mackenzie. Big Head. Quinn. <laughs> oh, you said Quinn. I thought you said wait, my foul. Quinn. Snake. Rabina. Uh, not an asset? Picor. Uh, I don't know. Sweet. She's sweet. And finally, Tucker. Tucker, the first word that comes to, head, to my head is rival, man. That's my rival. Unfortunately, he sniped me. I, I don't know if I'm revealing this news to you, but uh, Tucker is the new HOH. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, uh, hmm, that would have been difficult to navigate this week, for sure. I definitely would have played it like I threw the wall if you would have won. Well, regardless, Cedric, I'm so happy we got the chance to talk. I think you going out with your head held high amidst all these circumstances do does show, you know, the person that you are. And clearly from the reaction of the house guests as well, it it's very clear how loved you were and that it was only through you know the the series of unfortunate events as you mentioned that you're talking with me today and 
again, I think you're going to come out to a lot of people that are also very positively supporting you as well. And it's all about, you know, you receiving what you give as well. So thank you for giving me the time to talk all about these tumultuous few weeks and uh, for opening up so much. I really appreciate this, man. You're welcome. Thank you so much for the opportunity to even be interviewed by you. You're amazing. Thank you. Oh, thanks so much. And well, all the best to you and yours and uh, enjoy your weekend. Thanks so much again, Cedric. Thank you to you and yours as well. It's all yep. love.